Philip Rucker is Washington Post national editor and MSNBC political analyst and co-author of I Alone Can Fix It. Christy Greenberg is former federal prosecutor, former deputy chief for the SDNY criminal division and an MSNBC legal analyst. And MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin is with me here in the studio. So, Lisa, the New York Times described this today, that Weisselberg's uh, pattern of allegiance to Trump ultimately re resulting in a jail sentence. Can you remind us how this all came about and how it connects back to the former president? So Alan Weisselberg, as you noted, was prosecuted for perjury. And that perjury occurred in the context of the New York Attorney General's civil fraud trial that was just tried before Judge Arthur and Goron. That's the case that led to that $454 million judgment. Both at two depositions and during trial, Mr. Weisselberg is accused of having lied about his involvement and the false valuation of Trump's triplex apartment at Trump Tower. You will recall that that apartment was falsely represented to be 30 plus thousand square feet, when in actuality it only has about 10,000 square feet. Mr. Weisselberg said he didn't learn the truth about that until after a landmark Forbes article in 2016. Again, in actuality, documents show, according to the DA's office, that he was very much in knowledge of the actual size of the apartment and worked with people within the Trump organization to ensure that the truth was not disclosed to Forbes or otherwise. Moral of the story, don't say something that can be disproved in documentation. All right, Phil, there is a long line of Trump's current and former allies who have ended up behind bars. But this is a man who worked for him for 40 years. Having studied Donald Trump closely, does this hit Trump particularly close to home? What do you make of what Donald Trump must be looking at, thinking about right now? Well, it certainly hits close to home, Chris, because not only did uh, Alan Weisselberg work for Trump uh, in the Trump organization for so many decades, but he did so in a role that was uh, something of paramount importance to Trump. He was the chief financial officer. He was in charge of the books, the numbers, sort of assessing uh, the profits and revenues, as well as the losses uh, for Trump's real estate portfolio. And, you know, he's the person who, uh, who Trump would go to to learn, um, you know, how he's making money, uh, how they they're, how they're assessing all of that, what they're reporting back to the IRS, et cetera. So a, a, a really key figure in Trump world for decades before Trump uh, entered political office. And so to see him uh, now be going to jail, uh, as, we, as we learned today, is a, a real blow to the former president. So, Christy, legally speaking, it would seem like this could close the book on Alan Weisselberg. But I understand that Attorney General Letitia James now wants Trump's court-appointed monitor in the civil fraud case to look more deeply into some of the circumstances surrounding Weisselberg's plea. What could that mean? I think what Tish James is really trying to understand is whether or not that some of those documents that made it clear that Alan Weisselberg had perjured himself at her trial, those were apparently documents that were not in the possession of the New York AG and, and documents that she had requested. So she wants to see what those documents are. She wants to understand the circumstances as to why they were not turned over to her and who was involved in, in that decision making to see if there were any consequences that she could bring in connection with the civil fraud case. So, Lisa, all of that, it's against that backdrop that on Monday, there is still a schedule for jury selection to begin in the hush money trial. Um, there was also a new filing in that case today. What was that about? We still don't know. What it appears to be is a new lawsuit against Judge Juan Mershon. Other outlets are reporting that it has to do with his refusal to recuse himself from the case. But, Chris, I want to note for you that all the filings in this new case are sealed publicly on the docket. There is a possibility that we will see some appellate argument. We haven't seen that yet, but as soon as we know something, we'll certainly bring it to you here first. But what do you think the chances are we might? Know what it's about or that it know will delay? Know what it's about. I'm not sure because, again, they're sealed right now. That hasn't been the pattern here of Trump's last-ditch efforts to delay this. What I will tell you is whatever it is about, I don't think it's likely to succeed. I told someone be before the beginning of this week, Buckle up. You will see any number of efforts made this week by Trump and his lawyers to delay the start of this trial and to create some sort of havoc in the public mind about what this trial is really about. That doesn't mean that we won't see jury selection start on Monday in the most mundane of ways, 
even though the defendant is the former president of the United States and the presumptive GOP nominee. So to simplify, something that is filed this late is, in the legal sense, a true Hail Mary. It is a true Hail Mary, and what we can tell from what you can see on the docket is that it is a lawsuit against Judge Juan Mershon. You and I have talked before about the fact that in New York, there's a proceeding called Article 78. It allows you to sue a state or local government actor or agency for some unlawful act, sometimes an unconstitutional act. This might be Trump's way of suing Judge Mershon for refusing to recuse himself or taking other steps in this case that Trump will allege are not only unlawful, but so egregiously unlawful that they demand an immediate appeal. So, Phil, as you well know, none of the attempts to delay this trial uh, have so far worked for Donald Trump and team. Do we have a sense of whether his legal team is ready for this trial, whether they've actually been banking on the idea that they might be able to push it off? Well, Chris, they've certainly been trying to push it off for a while now. That's been unsuccessful. Uh, it does appear that the trial is, is set to begin next week with jury selection. And that, by the way, could take a number of days um, to get through the jury selection process. But um, his team has been anticipating a trial for some time. And frankly, it would be kind of legal malpractice if they weren't uh, prepared uh, with a strategy for that to begin. Um, clearly, the delay strategy was the, the pretrial strategy. But once it begins, they'll, they'll have a, their own strategy to try to protect and defend uh, Donald Trump in this trial. And Chrissy, there's something else that maybe uh, points to some disarray on behalf of the Trump legal team. Maybe not, but you tell me, because according to the DA's filing, uh, Trump's attorneys actually ended up subpoenaing the wrong guy. Can you explain that? Right. They, so they, they served a Jeremy Rosenberg uh, but not the Jeremy Rosenberg they wanted to serve. The Jeremy Rosenberg they're interested in is a former uh, district attorney investigator. And they served the subpoena on the wrong person. That person said, I have no files. And by the way, I'm going to keep the $15 that you sent me that would allow me to you know, send you documents if I had them. And oh, wait the a minute. Team... So they send him 15 bucks and they say, yeah. send me the files. And he's like, I haven't got no files, but I'm keeping the money. Exactly. <laughs> and the Trump team then complained, well, this guy has a really flippant and dismissive approach, and this is wrong. And why is he acting this way? Well, he's acting that way because he actually didn't have any documents because he got the wrong guy. Um, so what they Does actually this stuff want. happen, I guess, maybe as a question. I mean, common name or should any tr any trial lawyer but particularly at this level under this scrutiny not make that kind of mistake so they shouldn't make this mistake because this is a former district attorney investigator and if they wanted to get the right person and not go around the DA's office, you can communicate with the DA's office about who you would like to serve a subpoena on. In fact, that is the proper procedure. Any criminal defendant in this in the state before you get a get to subpoena a, a third party or in this case, a party that's affiliated with the state, you should be having communications with the state that, that you wish to do that. And you need to get authorization from the court to do so. Uh, so there, there are procedures here, and it seems like the Trump team isn't following them. And that, that's really on them for, uh, for not going through the procedures in the way that, that they need to be followed. I should not have implied that whoever got the wrong uh, request would have spoken in double negatives. It was kind of a joke. <laughs> uh, Lisa Rubin, Phil Rucker, Christy Greenberg, you cannot make this stuff up. Thank you all so much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.